a spring delay by Castone, which is funny because it's spelled just like Springdale by Keystone here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. This is a 332 RB, new floor plan at the time of this filming, and she is nice. Uh, you see this floor plan done in laminated trailers a lot. I've not really seen it done in a conventionally constructed trailer before. Now this comes in at 9,300 pounds. It is big. It is not light because this is built like a brick. We do not have structure, leak problems, none of that garbage out of Springdale. They are a brand that is put together well. And if you hang with me through this video, I'm gonna point out the little things that uh, I think they do different from the industry standard and why I think that they may benefit you. And if you have additional questions, you can answer quite a few of those via the link in the video description. Things like pricing, tank capacities, total length, that stuff will be down there. This is a brand new model, so uh, if you're watching this video when I just, just post it, those specs may not yet be available. Big front baggage compartment, and I like that they use these big 30 inch wide baggage doors so you can actually stuff some real baggage, or uh, uh, chairs down here, some folding chairs and whatnot. Even in the past they're using uh, LED lights, which is a nice touch. Um, <clears throat> this has a big awning on it with full LED lighting. And someone's gonna instantly notice that that goes right over a big super slide on the door side of the trailer and they're gonna say, whoa, Jack, that's killing my awning space, man. And I actually took a still photo of the awning all the way out, showing you how much sticks out past that. The short answer is you got plenty of room for a picnic table down there, but what you're gaining is a ton of interior space. So again, if you're just on YouTube, click over to our website via that link that I leave down below the video and you get to see that. Now, uh, they've put a rugged all aluminum front on this. That front sweep is aluminum, not fiberglass. So it's painted, it's not color infused, it's not gonna chalk or anything, but it's also super thick. The whole darn thing is going to uh, fight wind deflection and uh, stones. So it's gonna keep looking good. Power awning, power tongue jack, LED lights on the awning, all those normal good things. We put power stabilizers on this girl. Um, that is typically how we're going to build this, but it is not standard stuff. So if at any point you're curious to know exactly how we have it built, again, there's a link in the video description. Enclosed underbelly here with a heat duct coming off the back of the furnace to help provide some supplemental heating here to give you an extended camping season. Black tank flush outside shower for easy peasy utility stuff. Um, and aluminum wheels on a wide stance stability axle. I was actually asking the delivery driver, how's she tow? And he goes, I like towing these trailers that have those spread axles. I say, yeah, why is that? Well, today happens to be a windy day. And as he was flying 70 mile an hour up the highway, bringing this puppy here, uh, he, uh, he mentioned that, you know, he's just not getting shoved around the road nearly to the extent that he would with a conventional axle system on a trailer. So it does help the trailers track uh, a little more truly behind your vehicle. Um, <clears throat> I've had people say, yeah, but if you jackknife turn, don't you kind of push the front tire a little bit? And the short answer is, yeah. And they say, well, can't that blow out the tires? And my answer is, in four years, I've not seen it happen once. And in four years, that means that I've seen, I don't know, roughly 7,000 trailers through our lot. So I don't think that's a real world concern. I think it's a theoretical concern and a good one, but one that falls apart in practice. We've added a bumper mounted grill. That's why that bracket's there. That's an option. But this will come with, they don't call it an outside kitchen anymore. They're calling it the outdoor entertainment. Don't call it an outside kitchen, they'll punch you in the eye sockets. Uh, <laughs> not really, <laughs> that was aggressive. Um, so they did something cool here. They brought a TV outside and a lot of brands give you an outside TV hookup, but they, they included it. They said, you know what, let's go all the way, let's do it. And they even swing arm mounted it. So you got awesome visibility. However your campsite set, it's good. You're good, like Verizon, you're good. Um, or I don't know, that guy's with Sprint now. I don't even know what to think of that dude anymore. My life's a lie. Um, Dad's medicine cabinet outside to keep cold drinks on hand. Cool little utility drawer for your grill lighters and sunscreen and stuff. And just a handy little prep space. So you got a place to set your platter when you're moving the meat on the grill over here. Um, the This is interesting. Instead of uh, an outside sink, they went with a little utility sprayer. And they gave it a little spray on head so that you can kind of hook anything you want up to it. Whatever you could hook up to a garden hose, you could hook up to this thing. So what I'd do is I'd put one of those little hand squeezy sprayers and I'd tell my kid to come here and then I'd spray them and then I'd run away. I probably would do that, that'd be mean, but oh, I think about it. I think about mean things. <laughs> I don't know if that's mean, just, I don't know, I'm an instigator. 
<laughs> aluminum entry steps, they're lighter. They're not gonna be subject to a lot of corrosion. We have a nice friction hinged door so you can whip this thing open. Oh my gosh, I forgot to hook up my battery box. It's gonna be dark inside. Pardon me, you can get to watch how I do the behind the scenes magic here. One of those here and one of those here. And we flip that switch. Check it real quick. Hey, we got power. Okay, thanks for hanging out with us. We're back in action. Moving inside. 9,300 pound dry weight, like I said. Not a lightweight trailer. Very well built. And uh, here's a couple, you know, explanations of that. This flooring, instead of four by eight flooring sheets, which is industry standard, they used a different style flooring here. It's called Dynaspan. It's literally the same flooring they use in Cougar and Montana luxury fifth wheels. So it comes in 24 foot lengths, which picture that, by the way, that's a, that's a big chunk of wood. It's five, uh, five eighths uh, inches thick. And in this floor plan, it's going to come to right about here where there's going to be construction on top of it. Then you're going to see another chunk of Dynaspan go the rest of the way. And if you're kind of curious about this stuff, take a look at it. That's Dynaspan right there. Um, it is an OSB type product, but it has so much glue and resin in the mold that it can repel water better than anything. Take a chunk of Dynaspan, a chunk of common OSB, and a chunk of plywood and put them in a jar of water for a month. That Dynaspan looks exactly the same when you're done with it. OSB and even plywood by that point, they're shredded wheat, man. There's nothing left of them. Now, other little construction points. If you start looking around at Keystone products, grab a door jam and just yink on this thing. It's got a full studded head header beam above this thing. All of their interior walls are fully framed. That is not true of most of the RV business. Usually these are just false visual panels to help define rooms for a potential buyer. That is why this is not an ultralight trailer. It is a rock solid, well-built structural trailer with like virtual load bearing interior walls built not unlike the mindset of a home, uh, you know, in home construction. And I don't use camera tricks. I don't use deceptive fisheye lenses because I don't need to trick you into buying here. Um, I can give you good information and you can choose to buy here. So this has a six inch build roof, which uh, Keystone's actually the originator of that. They're the first ones that created it. That gives us a six foot, 10 inch max interior height, which really helps open up the look and feel in here. We see central air, we see uh, LED lights, no crank uh, antenna system so that you just, you can get, you know, great reception without having to, uh, worry about fiddling that thing up and down. Um, so we've got a kitchen slide over here, super slide on the other side. Let's go ahead and knock this kitchen out while I'm staring at it. There's a lot of storage in this thing. You've got pantry space, drawer space, more pantry space, and this is ridiculous. This is huge over here. Um, in the slide out, they went with the little retro style easy grab handle. So folks with maybe a little bit of arthritis in the hands, these are easy. You, you just can't get easier than that. You don't have to do the, you know, secret handshake method of opening your refrigerator. Um, now they did something here I really like. They put a window in this kitchen slide out. That meant that they had to make this about a foot longer. They could have saved some money and some weight by not extending the slide out, but that gives you a cross breeze window. That gave you room for an appliance outlet. That gave you room for countertop and drawers. Without that, you wouldn't have these. That's what I like about this. They didn't shortcut it, they did it right. They're, everything in this matters, nothing in this doesn't. That's kind of just the Keystone build model in general. They just don't mess around with stuff that doesn't have to be there. Um, you know, your island now has all sorts of additional drawer. Ugh. Good latches. Storage, storage space, room for a trash can down here below the island. They've done an excellent job of storage in here, really have. Now I also love, and they're the only ones that seem to be doing this, and I wish more people do it, they offset the sink. Every brand always puts the sink dead in the middle of the island because it, it, I guess it looks aesthetically uh, symmetrical, but it's not campsite functional. As a person who goes camping, I would rather have this big chunk of space right here than one space this size over here and one space that size over here where you can't even set a dinner plate down. I can actually serve dinner right over here. That's awesome and that's what it needs to be. And again, if they centered this up, you'd lose drawer space. And there's no such thing as too much drawers or too much counter space in a uh, uh, RV, you know? There's just not. Um, so 
I was expecting a hide bed right here when I first looked at this floor plan. And I was like, really? A theater seat? And then I started thinking about it. And you got all the sleeping space you're going to need back here in this private rear bunkhouse. You don't need more sleeping space. This floor plan needs a living room. And that's what this is for. This is on Boardwalk and Park Place, as I say all the time. It's a, a wall-hugging theater recliner. Bang! Right at your entertainment center. And you see that TV kicks out. So you also get a good look at it at the dinette to my right. AM, FM, CD, DVD, Bluetooth player, which is becoming pretty industry standard, so I won't bang on that too much. Gas and electric water heater, pretty-ish common. Um, well, uh, uh, let's go ahead and finish up the living room while we're here. This is a floating dinette table. It's on an elliptical base. So that can fold up, fold down. You can actually use it like a coffee table right here in front of your beautiful theater seat. And take it outside. It's a picnic table. You also notice uh, USB outlets right here in your slide where you're going to spend most of your time. So uh, on a rainy day, if we're just stuck inside, we can play our, you know, Pokemon Go here or whatever it is, and we, we can have a good time. Um, storage below the dinette benches, easy access doors to get to that as well. And whew, big windows. Moving on, we have a nice real door to the rear private bunkhouse. Now, if I just stood here, you're looking at this video going, geez, another one of these bunkhouses. I've seen this before. No, not really, because this has storage. The common bunkhouse slide-out model could only dream of having. This is, if this is not bigger than your kitchen storage side of this, I'll be surprised. They split it behind the entertainment center to just give you serious, serious storage space. 300 pound rated upper bunk, which is the most I've ever seen anyone do, but I've seen as low as 120. So again, they're building it right with a lot of structure under the skin. And um, the uh, converted cube, futon, bed, single double king bed, whatever you want it to be, lounge, sofa, it only does everything. It's a Swiss Army couch. Is You know what? I'm going to call them that from now on. Swiss Army couch, because everybody gets that. Now, a lot of brands will do a little bit wider bunk on top, and they uh, foregone that here, they had foregone that to uh, leave this space more open. You still have room for a TV up there. We still have a nice little storage pocket right here. Well, nice little. That's pretty big, actually. That goes back in there. But we still And we still have a ladder to get to the upper bunk. Plenty of good window space and ventilation. Now, any of the Springdale models that start with three, this being a 332 included, are standard 50 amp service. So this is ready for a second air conditioner if we didn't already build it that way to begin with. A lot of the time, we will build these with one 15,000 BTU air instead of the standard 13.5, but you can upgrade to a second AC, which will occupy this vent right here. Now, if we sell out of a popular model, which I believe this will be, it's new, but I think this will be popular, um, we will occasionally call down to Springdale and be like, listen, man, whatever you got, get it to us as soon as we can because we got a hot seller and we need stuff in stock. Uh, bathroom area back here. You know, neat little thing I just kind of keyed into. I almost walked right past it, but I noticed they uh, put a little coat hang hanger right there. And that made me realize this is the perfect little spot to put shoes by the entry door because it's out of the way enough. You're not going to trip on it. But they're easy to get to. Simple. It doesn't have to be fancy to work really well. Um, the uh, We got a foot floor stool here. And notice that they mounted it on an angle. So, if I sit down and you can see with my big long legs I don't have to do some weird twist them up bathroom yoga in here it's just easy to get to now that arch ceiling plus that skylight are gonna give you all the headroom you're gonna need even a tall guy like me has room in there and and simple but effective bath fixtures all the way around now you can see that we've got a direct entry door to the master bed right here we can get to it from both sides so that whether you're from the bunkhouse or coming from the bedroom, it's easy to get to no matter what. And again, all the doors close. And this is something I kind of keyed into the other day. A lot of times when a, an RV is uh, sitting out on the lot, not leveled with the stabilizers down, if you yank hard enough, you can actually just pull the door open because the door jam is out of square. It's not, it's not uh, you know, properly fitted anymore. But remember how they fully frame in these doors? That door works all the time, every time, the way it's supposed to, and the hinges aren't going to wear out. You know, it's just, this is going to continue to last. It, you know, any RV, any RV should do fine the first year or two. It's, do you plan on owning it for a long time? Because that's what this is built for. This is built for the longer term ownership. This is built to be like, okay, mom and dad, you've got uh, a bunch of kids, 
you're going to go camping for eight or nine years. Then you're going to trade it off for the big Montana luxury fifth wheel. That's who this is for. Both sides of the bed have power outlets right up by your head. So if you want to play with your phone at night or run your CPAP machine, you don't have to get choked to death by a, a scraggle of cables everywhere. And uh, one of my salesmen told me this just now. It has a guaranteed squeak-free hinge on the laundry chute. And I said, what? And he goes, look, it's a guaranteed squeak-free hinge because it's a carpet hinge, the jerk. He had me going. But it is a cool feature because you can keep your uh, laundry basket right there and then just grab the basket from your baggage door when you get back home. And big cross breeze windows in here. Uh, you can throw a TV on this wall. You could probably mount one in the, in the roof rafters because it's a constructed roof with studs you can tap into. This is a great trailer. This is a really big bunkhouse. Um, give us give us a call, 800-256-5196, Haylet RV of Coldwater, Michigan, here with the uh, Spring Dale by Kistone. So, hitching pieces, parts, financing, trades, and only everything in between, even trucks and package deals, we do it all, man. So, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.